Uh, I want you to take your Bible and turn to uh, the book of Galatians. That's with a G, like Galen, G-A-L. Galatia, these people that lived there were called Galatians. Apostle Paul wrote a Holy Spirit-led book to the Galatians. There's six chapters in there, and we'll look at chapter 6. Uh, Galatians chapter number 6 tonight, and uh, hold your place there in Galatians 6. And then you want to look at John 15. That's why I tell you to bring your Bibles. That phone is an outdated, out archaic, outmoded piece of medieval equipment that can't keep up with the King James Bible. Uh, Galatians chapter number 6. Uh, look at uh, an amazing verse of Scripture. Now, I want everybody to look at this because you ain't going to believe this in the Bible if you didn't listen to me. So this is in the Bible, okay? This is in the Bible. Galatians 6, verse 3. Everybody look at this. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. That means if you think you're something, you're kidding yourself. <laughs> That's what that means. The Bible says you think you're something when you're nothing. You know the Bible says you are nothing? Wow. Wow. How's that for your self-esteem? That's good for it, ain't it? Look here in John 15. And look here what he said. John chapter 15 and verse number 5. John 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do what? Nothing. Nothing. The Lord said, you can't do nothing without me. And according to the Bible... In the teaching, without the Lord, we're nothing. Without his blessings, we're a big zero. Now, to illustrate that tonight, I want to uh, uh, show you this. this. This is you and me. That's it. That's that. We are uh, a zero. The Bible said, if a man thinks himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceives himself. That means all these people to Oscars and the Grammys and the Emmys and they walk in, you know, and they got on a $5,000 dress and a $20,000 necklace and I look at him. They are a zero. Zap, zilch. And if you don't believe it, look at them in 20 years. They won't even come out of their mansions. They're so ugly. Uh, and, and withered up like a prune. And uh, they, they're showing that they're nothing. They're nothing. They're nothing. And con this, what I'm going to tell y'all tonight goes contrary to every college and university in America. There is not a secular college or university in the world that would agree with what I'm saying tonight. They teach you, believe in yourself, you're wonderful, you're great. <laughs> Whoa, boy, you got to have an imagination to think that. Don't you? Like that lady said one time, uh, she looked at her picture of hers and she, he, she said, this, this picture don't do me justice. And a man said, lady, you don't need justice, you need mercy. <laughs> and, and that's true. That's true. That's what most of us need. Ain't that right? We need mercy, buddy. We need mercy. Now, uh, the, every, every, uh, every educational, the National Educational Association, uh, the National Psychiatry, Psychology, every secular training camp in America teaches you that you can be anything you want to be and do anything you want to do if you believe in yourself. The Bible, as always, teaches the very opposite. The Lord said, without me, you can do nothing. Now, with the Lord, you can do anything. You can do anything God wants you to with his blessings and power on it. But without him, you can't do nothing. So you're a zero. Now, I'm going to quote you an old cartoon, old cartoon. These cartoon I'm going to quote you is older than the hills. They're older than I am. They're older than uh, y'all are. I mean, this we're talking back in the early when cartoons first came out. Early, 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 early Disney. And it's called the Flying Mouse. Anybody ever in here? Do you know where this mouse, this, somehow or another this mouse thought it had wings or it got wings or glued them on or something. Some, somehow the story with this mouse got wings and he's, he winds up flying into a bat cave and he sees this bat there and the bat said, uh, what, are you a bat? And he said, no. He said, I'm a mouse. And the bat said, you ain't, a, you ain't a mouse. Mouse don't have wings. And so he made this little song 
and the big old mean looking bat looked down at this little mouse with wings on and he said this, you're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing but a nothing. To be a bat's a bum thing, a silly and a dumb thing, but at least a bat is something and you're not a thing at all. You're nothing, you're nothing, you're absolutely nothing. Anybody ever heard that except me? I was one, two, all right. He says, you're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing but a nothing. To be a bat is a bum thing, a silly and a dumb thing, but at least a bat is something, and you're not a thing at all. You're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing but a nothing. You're not, that's awful, isn't it? Man, you want to commit suicide, somebody. I, I, you listen to that for a while. But now listen, that, that's the truth. You know, everybody wants to be popular. Everybody wants to be a success. Everybody wants to be a celebrity. Everybody wants to be that. And um, you know what we need to do? We need some college courses on nothingness, how to be a good nothing. For the Lord. The Lord's looking for some nothings. Did you know actually that if you have talent and looks and ability and, and, and uh, that's, that's a handicap if you ever do anything for God? You know, uh, if you're beautiful, uh, you don't have to worry about it, most of you, but uh, if you're beautiful, that's actually a handicap for God ever using you because it gets in your way. You start thinking you're special and then the Lord can't use you. you know, we need college campus on uh, nothing nothingness 101 or something like that and teach kids you're nothing without the Lord. So I'm going to illustrate it. All right, there's us. There's me and you. Now, you know what the Lord is? The Lord is a one. He is number one. He is the greatest one. Matter of fact, he is the only one. And, with, and so me and you are a nothing. Now, if the Lord just in this world and influence on this world, he's there. But you can take the zero and put it behind the one, the one first, zero behind it, and you got what? Ten. So one zero in front of that one increases its value ten times. So the Lord can be ten times more effective in any community if just one zero will get behind him. Just one. Think about another one. That's a hundred. Another one, that's 1,000. Another one, that's 10,000. Another one, you think about it, 50 Christians went out of here tonight and said, I am nothing. I, I don't have any, the only thing I've got, Lord, is what you've given me. I'm giving you everything I am. And you, there's no telling what God could accomplish. And you know what happens? People do this. Now, you know, you take this one here, there's one, and you put that in front of that, look what it does. That decreases the value of that one to a uh, point one of a hundredth, right? So that would be, it would take 100 times, or 99 times away from it. Point one, Z, point zero one would be one up to 99 be 100. So it would take away from it 99 times its worth. Am I right? I am right. Who's the mathematician? Yeah, I'm right. Uh, if you just had that point one, it'd be a tenth. But point zero one is a hundred. That's right. All right. You look here. Look at that. You take if you get in front of the Lord, you decrease His value ninety nine percent in your life. If you get your life and your desires and your will in front of God's will, you put Him down to one percent, and you're at ninety nine. If you let Him be first, you make Him ten times greater in your life. Got that? Can you figure that out? That's our math lesson for tonight, boys and girls, since y'all ain't been to school a month. Can't even add one and zero. Uh, but uh, you, you're, you're nothing. You're nothing. We, we are not creators. We are creation. We are zeros in the great world of spiritual mathematics. The zero is only any good when it's behind a number. A zero is nothing until it gets behind a number. It increases its value tenfold. Jesus is the one we need, and we are the zero. All things are made by him. A zero in front of the number uh, decreases its value hundredfold, like I showed you there just a minute ago. On the day of Pentecost, the Lord Jesus Christ manifested himself. Peter and 119 other zeros jumped up, and they took the whole country for the glory of God. You know what they did? He, you know what John the Baptist said one time in John 3.30? They come to John and they said, man, you're something special. Are you the Christ? 
He said, I'm not the Christ. He is. I must decrease. He must increase. Now, i tell you what's wrong with the world tonight, and especially what's wrong with church. We're in the spotlight, and the Lord's back yonder hid somewhere. Uh, you know what we need to do? Get out of the way and put him up there first and say he's everything and we're nothing and then we get somewhere, right? I remember the night I got saved. Uh, I, I bet you half the people in here don't remember what the sermon was the night you got saved. It was just, it was God and not the preacher. It was God and not the, not the person. And, and I don't, I, I got saved before the preacher ever got up to preach. You know why? The Lord was first and there's a bunch of zeros after him. He said, without me, you can do nothing. I'm gonna give you a little, a little, just a little Bible thought about this and then we'll go, okay? Number one, number one, we are nothing of goodness. We are nothing of goodness. We come into this world uh, like that, we come into this world sinners. We come into this world uh, with, uh, with nothing good in us, with a sinful nature. That prodigal son in, in Luke chapter 15, when he got down there, the Bible said when he had spent all, he had nothing. He had nothing. He did not have one thing to bring back to his father and say, Daddy, I, I got about 50, 50, 50 or 60,000 dollars left. If you'll let me come back home, I'll give it to you. He had nothing. The Bible said he spent all. He had nothing. He had nothing of goodness. Do you know the Bible said there is nothing, uh, no, none good, no, not one? Do you know the old song says when you come to the Lord, it said, uh, not, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. You don't come to the Lord and impress him as a, all right, Lord, you seen what I've done the other day, don't you? I, you see, you know, I gave some money or I helped a poor man out over here or I gave a guy, even, I gave a guy a dollar at Walmart. I, I mean, I had 300 in my pocket, but I gave him one. You seen that, didn't you? Uh, the Lord's not impressed one bit of our goodness. But you know what? We'll come and we'll say, I'll be a zero. I'll be a zero. I do not have one good thing about me to give you God, but if I'll just be a zero, if you'll get in front of me, I'll get behind you. Amen. That's right. We have nothing of goodness. The Bible said there in Luke chapter number seven and verse 42, they had nothing. In Luke 15, the prodigal son had nothing. You have nothing to give him. You have nothing to give him. There ain't nothing good about you. I've heard people say, well, I'll tell you one thing, preacher. If anybody ever went to heaven, grandma did. <laughs> you ever heard anybody say that? I tell you, but your sweet little grandma was a sinner just like everybody else. She sure was. She might have kept it hid real good, uh, but she, she was a sinner. Lord, some of them old grandmas up there in the mountain, I mean, they wore them dresses down to there and their hair was down to here. And they'd never had a haircut and didn't wear no makeup. And you know that. And, but boy, Lord, have mercy. Their tongue would reach from here to the net, interstate exit 106 up yonder. They put that back in my mouth. Put that big old water in the back of well, one thing right now, bless God, these hypocrites. That's what they some of them grandmas would do, you know. Some of them old grandmas mean as a snake. Uh, your, your grandma, uh, she might not have seen no sin. Ow. I said one time, I said, uh, uh, Grandma, uh, said, uh, 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 what does that verse in the Bible mean that says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? And she went, If that don't mean going to ball games on Sunday, I don't know what it means. <laughs> that's her answer. <laughs> uh, that's grandma for you. Grandma ain't good as you thought she was. I said, what's that one time? They said, Grandma, will smoke and send you to hell? She said, it sure will. Sure will, bless God. Anybody burn something that tastes that good, ought to go to hell. That's right. That's grandma for you. That's grandma for you. But I'm going to tell you something. Grandma's a sinner, and her grandma's a sinner, and her grandma's a sinner, and her grandma's a sinner, and you're a sinner, and I'm a sinner. Everybody, you ever, you ever met these people that don't never have never done nothing wrong? That's the most nauseating bunch of people you ever been around. You know, just sickening to be around. I can't stand to be around people that they've never done nothing wrong. One guy uh, it's, it was, had a preacher in the car with him, and he told him. He said, "Now I got sanctified." Uh, 20 years ago, and I ain't sinned in 20 years. And his little daughter in the back seat went, Daddy, <laughs> your kids know you've sinned in 20 years. Amen? Yes, sir, they sure do. Ladies and gentlemen, we're good, nothing in goodness. But not only that, we're nothing in strength. We're nothing in strength. 
uh, the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ flowed out to people who realized they were weak. He said they that are whole don't need a physician, only they that are weak. I'll give you some examples. In Mark chapter 5 and verse 25, the Bible said there's a woman came to the Lord and it said she had spent her money on physicians and when she had spent all, she had nothing. She had nothing. She didn't say, well, I've been to every doctor in town and I got $10,000 left and if you'll help me. No, the Bible said she spent all. You have nothing in strength. You got to realize you're nothing in goodness. You're nothing in strength. He gives you your strength. Do you know who's keeping your heart beating right now? The Lord is. That's why you ought to go to church and live right and serve him and do the right thing. He can unplug you anytime he gets ready. He can just flip the switch, buddy, and you're gone. And every doctor in the world can't keep you alive. I'm telling you this evening, hey, we're nothing in strength. The Bible talked about that impotent man there in, in uh, John chapter 5 and verse number 7 when he's laying there beside that pool and once in a while an angel would come down and trouble the waters and the first person that stepped in that pool got, got, got healed. And, they, and come the Lord, that man came to him one time and he said, uh, uh, what's your problem here? And he said, well, uh, I ain't got no man. I ain't got no man. I can't do it. Nobody else will help me. I have nothing. You're in a good shape for the Lord to help you when you realize that you're nothing without him. You realize you're nothing without him. Your education, your talent, your looks, your ability, your bank account, you just say, it's nothing, Lord. I came into this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. You help me and you use me and you bless me ever how you see fit and you'll get somewhere. You're nothing in strength. Amen? Oh, to be nothing. Painful the humbling may be, yet low in the dust I'd lay me that the world my Savior might see. You, you do know the biggest work God ever made, creation, he made out of nothing. Amen. He done this out of nothing. He didn't take what was here and make everything out of it. He made everything out of nothing and spoke it into existence. Now, if God can take nothing and make everything out of it, God can take me and you and use us and for his glory if we'll just get out of the way and put him first and stand behind him. Like that right there. We're nothing in strength. Number three, we are nothing in resources. God uses nothings. I can of mine own self do nothing. You remember them guys over there fishing? The Bible said they toiled all night and caught nothing. That's, that's right. They caught, uh, caught no fish. Well, then the Lord came and he got over there like this and he got behind him and he said, put your net on the other side of the boat. So they throwed their net on the other side of the boat and they couldn't even get it in. It's so full of fish. We're nothing in reason. It's the Lord that gives you the ability to get wealth. It's the Lord that gives you the ability to make money and pay your bills and buy your kids stuff. All that comes from God. It all comes from the Lord. You're nothing in resources without him. In John chapter 2, the first miracle that Jesus ever performed in public there in John chapter 2, the lady come to, uh, they come to the Lord and they said they have no wine, none, nothing. They didn't say, Lord, we got a little bit. Can you put some water in it and water it down and feed it? No, we, we started with nothing. We, he's not impressed with something. You don't say, Lord, I got a little bit. Can you help me? You say, Lord, I have nothing. Help me, God, and the Lord will help you in resources. In Matthew 15 and verse 30, 32, the Bible said that big old multitude was out there, and it said they have nothing, nothing to eat. That's right. Uh, the Bible said in John chapter uh, uh, 2 and 3 about the wine. The Bible said in Matthew, Acts 6, 3 and verse 6, Peter looked at that man, and he looked down at that guy, and he said, silver and gold have I a little bit, and we'll try to help you out. Uh-uh. Have I what? None. None. You see, when the Lord works miracles, the Lord works the miracles when we ain't got nothing. We're nothing in resources. Number four, we are nothing in success. It is not the lazy worker that finds the miraculous power of the Lord. It is the one who's toiled all night and take nothing and trust him and obeys him. I'll never forget the times that I've seen the Lord do a great and mighty work. Many, many years ago, 
up in, way up in the mountains, over in Robbinsville, North Carolina. Robbinsville's way over yonder past Cherokee, past the Natahala Gorge, way over yonder toward the tip of North Carolina. I mean, it's way over there. It's three hours from right here, and you're still in North Carolina. And the road just goes like this and goes like that. And years ago, I was, I was going through some very, very hard times in my life. I, wasn't, I was not in no shape to be helping nobody. That's the way I felt. And I, 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 I thought, you know, now you have felt before like, okay, I got this together now. I'm ready to help people. Glory to God. The Lord can't use you with that kind of attitude. He can't use you with this kind of attitude. If I'm superior and I'll straighten all these people out, that's not the attitude. God don't bless that. You know what? I went over there that day and I, that preacher asked me, he said, Danny, can you come and preach a revival? And it was, Lord, how mercy. Carrie, tell you, she went, I don't know how many nights over there with me. And we we'd lived, lived three hours from Marion almost to that church. And you go over to Asheville, and then you keep going 1923, and the road get littler and littler and littler and littler and littler, littler. And you just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Well, I rode over there that first evening, and I was driving this little old Toyota, I think it's a little Toyota Camry. And I remember going through them mountains, and it was just like this. I said, it was raining. And it was cold up in November. And I was driving through there and I couldn't hardly see. And I remember I thought, I can't preach. And I remember I was crying and tears running down my face. And I said, Lord, I'm a hypocrite. I don't, I don't even, I can't help nobody else. I feel like a hypocrite getting up there preaching. Lord, I'm in a mess. And I pulled that car over in front of the little old store and stopped there for a minute. And I was so sleepy and crying. And I put my head on the steering wheel. And for a minute, I went, went, just went to sleep out for a few minutes. And I put that thing in reverse and got back on the road because I was supposed to meet the preacher over there in town. I got over there in town, pulled in a little old place. And the preacher said, follow me, preacher. We're going straight on to the church. I said, okay. We left there, went up like this, through the mountains, through the mountains, round them curves, round this way. Round that way, up this way, round that way. I thought, Lord have mercy. There ain't nobody going to be here. This ain't right here in the middle of nowhere. There ain't a house in five miles of this place. And we, we went up there that night, little old country church. Uh, the whole church probably could have fit in this one section of seats right here. It probably hold about, oh, I don't know, probably maybe, maybe 150 people, something like that, just the whole church. And uh, I went in there that night. There's a few people in there about, about just a normal crowd and them, some of them old folks just come out of the woods, you know, and everything. And, and I'll never forget, I'll never forget sitting there. And I was hurting. I mean, I was hurting. I was going through one of the worst times I'd ever been through in my life. And I sat down like this. He said, boy, it sure is good to have Brother Danny Castle with us. And I thought, it is. I thought anybody in here could do a better job up there than I could. I said, Lord, I, I was wondering. I thought, man, I don't even know if there is a God. You say, Brother Danny, you're a preacher. That's right. You say, Brother Danny, you're a Christian. You've been preaching for years at that time. That's right. But did you know it is possible that things in your life can be so messed up and so bad, you'll start questioning everything you ever thought and heard. If you ain't careful. And I, I thought, oh, Lord, I don't even know if I'm saved or is a God. I felt terrible. And I'd always remembered hearing them old preachers saying, you get up and you say what's right and you preach by faith and you honor God. And he said, all right now, we're glad to have Brother Danny Castle from Marion, North Carolina. You come on and preach. And I got up there that night and I thought, well, I'll try. And I've done the best I could. I don't remember what I said. I said something about being faithful to church. I said something about maybe really getting in there and let's try to do something for God this week. And when I got through preaching, all of a sudden, a man jumped up from the back and he was bawling. I mean, just, he just sobbing, tears running down his face. He come running down, and it was the guy who had led the singing, the song leader that night. And he just fell in the altar. And I, I, a woman came out, I assumed was his wife, and, and some other people, and they were all crowded around her. People were sobbing. I thought, Lord, have mercy. What in the world is going on here? Did you kill somebody or something? And he, he got up a wiping tears, and there was a hugging necks and everything. And he turned around, 
And he said, folks, I just want to say something. I just want everybody to forgive me. He said, I've had my priorities wrong. He said, I'm wrong. He said, that boy of mine, he had a boy named Michael. He was in the ninth grade. Michael was already six foot two and could dunk a basketball. And Robbinsville was famous for football, but they they were playing basketball too. And he, he, he said, that boy's down there in that gym tonight playing ball. And he said, I've trained him all his life just to rush sports, sports, sports. And he said, I'm going to go home tonight and get my house in order and we're going to get put God first and we're going to get in this revival and, and everything. And people was uh, crying and all that. And all of a sudden, I felt something way down in here. thought, well, glory to God. Maybe there is a God. <laughs> and, and something in me said, hallelujah. I said, uh, I needed that. And he said, he said, well, so I went, they put me in a little old rundown motel and I stayed that night in that motel and I prayed the next day. We come back that night. I stood up there that night. You've heard me tell this story before. But Lord, I can't even tell you all the details. I've got up that next night and Michael was there. Big, tall boy, about that tall, long, black, curly hair. And he stood there, he's about 15. And he stood there and looked at me like, okay, so you're the person that made my daddy, I, the, the JV's had a game that night and his daddy wouldn't let him go. He said, you go on the revival, boy. And he said, uh, no, daddy, come on. He said, you go on the revival. You can play ball anytime. We're having revival. Right, we're gonna get our family back to God. And boy, he came that night and I preached and lo and behold, Michael come out of that seat and got down on that altar and got saved and there was a cry and grandma shouting and everything I thought well glory to God the next night here come Frank no he wasn't being born then uh, but uh, the next night uh, here come uh, here some of the, they brought some of the cheerleaders and brought some of the other kids from school and buddy the next thing I know here they all come and got saved and Thursday night they piled in there they come in there with their big R that Robbinsville jacket on they come in there and boy they had their foot the football team come in. I got up and preached, and they all coming out. You couldn't get another person in the altar. I was, by that, by Thursday night, I said, Lord of God, he's still on the throne. Hallelujah. And I preached Friday night. I preached the next week. I preached the next week. And I think it was 21 nights later, we had had 75 people saved. Uh, the whole town was turned upside down. School teachers was about to cry. Kids bringing their teachers and everything else and witnessing to them. And the power of God came in there. Preachers came out of that revival that are still preaching today. You know how God used me that time? Because I just become a big zero. And I said, God, I can't do nothing. He said, that's exactly what I'm looking for right there. I ain't looking for no big people, smart people, rich people, talented people. I'm looking for somebody that'll just be a zero that I can use. And buddy, she can tell you, we went over there night after night. There's still preachers in the ministry today that came out of that revival meeting. I'll say last, we are nothing in reward. In Luke chapter six and verse 35, listen to this, listen to this. The Bible said, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. One of the worst things about TV preachers is they create this impression in your mind, you want something? Give to me and you'll get a lot. That, that's the impression you get by listening to them. Now you send money into this ministry. You just send money. You, you, you want a blessing? Send it in here. <laughs> and you know, I always want to say, well, you send me some, and you want a blessing. Yeah. You know, they don't, <laughs> it works both ways, right? But the impression is, the way to get rich, is they don't look at it like you're giving in God. They look at it like you're sowing this seed, and you know, you're gonna sow this seed in this ministry and reap a great harvest. Now, there is such a thing. That's a scriptural principle. It really is. But you don't sow the seed. So you don't give money so you can get back more money. Right. You get, the Lord said, lend hoping for nothing in return. When you give somebody something, you say, I'm giving you this. I'm not giving you this so I can get a blessing, so I can brag about it, so I can say, everybody, look at me. I'm doing this to help you and because God wants me to. That's what you want to do and that's the kind of giving that God blesses. 
sincerely from your heart. You're nothing into this world and you'll take nothing out. Oh, the joy of having nothing, being nothing, seeing nothing, but a living Jesus and being careful for nothing but his interest down here. That's why the old preachers used to say you got to die to self. It's hard to do. You die to self tonight, he'll be right back tomorrow morning. That's why Paul said I die daily. Oh, you ever thought, boy, you ever went to the altar and think, man, I got the victory. Glory to God, I'll never sin again. And the next day, that old flesh rises right back up just as bad as it ever was. I'm back. It's like, like a ruckman. He used to say, he'd get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, all right, what are you up to today? <laughs> you know, this flesh is your enemy. This flesh is your enemy. You know who your worst enemy is? You. And that's your biggest hindrance. Not your husband. Not your daughter. Not your daddy. You. Be a nothing. I'm going to give an invitation tonight while Miss Desi's coming. And I'm going to ask if anybody would volunteer to be a nothing. That's hard to do. That's real hard to do. But if you want God to use you, be a nothing. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's moving, heads bowed, eyes closed. Now in this invitation tonight, maybe you just want to slip right out of your seat and just come and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be a nothing if you'll just take me however I am, Lord. That's right, others, others need to come. Others need to come. Quit trying to be something and just be willing to be a nothing. That's right, that's right. Lord bless y'all. Thank you. Lord bless you. You're willing to be a nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. Nothing but a nothing. You say, well, Brother Danny, that's awful for my self-esteem. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You're missing the important part. With him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So little Steph Curry puts on his tennis shoes. I can do all things. He chickened out on the through Christ part, but at least he got half of it on there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you tonight for our church. Lord, I guess we ought to call ourselves Nothing Baptist Church because we're nothing. Without you, we're nothing. We ask you to forgive us of everything we've done that would hinder your will from working in our life. Lord, we want to give you everything we are tonight so that you might use us for your glory. Use everybody in here to be a witness to somebody this week. Lord, use everybody in here to be a help to somebody this week and a testimony. We'll thank you for it. Bless us as we get ready for camp. And if there's a person here tonight who don't know for a fact where they're going when they leave this world. Help them not to leave this room tonight until they settle it once and for all by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you in our hearts? We we'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Thank you. God bless.